Hello sailors, this is the Dodgy Kebab, and coming up in this video, squirrels, cute animals, or brutal assassins. 5G phones and 4K TVs, but which is deadlier? My brother used to break in our house and steal the TV, but now he's dead. Also, pizza delivery man versus used car lot employees. Have charity UFC cage fights gone too far? But first, I want to talk about Ratchet and Clank. I feel like the gaming equivalent of Internet Explorer. These games have been coming out since 2002, and it's only now that I found them. I mean, I knew they existed, but at the time I didn't think, oh, I better stop playing Super Mario Sunshine so I can try out furries with guns. And just like Logan Paul's YouTube channel, it's something I've ignored ever since. But unlike ignoring Logan Paul, ignoring Ratchet and Clank means I've missed out on quality content. Now you may be asking what made me change my mind, but don't ask that. This is a pre-recorded video and I can't hear you. But to prevent you from endlessly screaming into the void, what happened was the PlayStation 5's reveal video. I watched the trailer for Ratchet and Clank A Rift Apart and I thought it looked simply fantastic. It's not only sold me on the PlayStation 5 as a future system, but also made me think that I may have overlooked a great series of games. After all, Ratchet and Clank were in PlayStation All-Stars, so maybe it was time I actually checked this series out. Like every PlayStation Plus subscriber, I have a ton of games that have never even been booted up and have been added to my I'll play it later pile. The PS4 reboot of the original was one such game sitting on my hard drive. I opened it up and this is what I found. No, not that. That's when I opened Google. Opening up the PlayStation 4 game was very different. If I had to quickly describe Ratchet and Clank, I say it was a video game. If I I was allowed a few more words, I'd call it an action-adventure platform game with combat mechanics. But this is a YouTube video, and it can be as long as I like, and I'd like to be at least 10 minutes long so I can earn some money. So let's start at the beginning. We'll skip over the story because A, I didn't record those bits, but more importantly, B, I'm all about the gameplay. There's nothing wrong with the story and all the characters are entertaining enough, but I'm only really interested in how much fun the gameplay loops are. You can stick your life as strange up your or to quote our Lord and Saviour Chad Warden Come on who wants to play that shit? So the first level is your textbook tutorial level. You cycle through the basic moveset. It's okay, it doesn't hold your hand very much and doesn't interrupt the flow of the game. It's nowhere near as bad as other tutorials in games, which prevent you from even playing the game so they can explain to you how to jump over a fucking rock. Although I'm sure tutorial levels are only in games because games journalists are thick as shit and need to be told what left and right on the control pad does. Personally, I think tutorial levels should be banned. It should be like the 90s, where you powered a game on and just worked out how to play within the first 20 seconds. Seriously, if you're so fucking stupid that you can't press a button on the controller and work out that whatever you pressed just caused the character on screen to perform whatever action happened, then you shouldn't be playing video games. You shouldn't even be allowed to operate a pair of fucking scissors. But anyway, the first level gets you into what the game is about, and that's running, jumping, and using the different weapons, which in the first level are only the all-purpose wrench and the grenades. As you work through the game, you'll get access to more and more weapons, although throughout this video, I have everything unlocked as I recorded the footage while on my second playthrough. That's how much fun this game is. The moment I beat the game on normal mode, I immediately started again, but in challenge mode. Something else you'll see in this video footage is the little ratchet watermark in the corner. This this is because I'm as lazy as a watch mojo content researcher and I couldn't be bothered to set up my PVR. So I use the built-in PS4 capture feature. This is the reason why this video is only in 720p. But for a quick idea on how much detail is lost, in this section you can just see me standing around. And here is a screenshot I captured of the same moment. So that gives you the sort of idea of the loss of detail that the PS4 capture feature brings. Whatever, back to the 
game and it's here at the second main level that the game really starts to show what it's all about. The art and graphic design is just stunning to look at. Everything is super detailed in a cartoony sort of way. It's definitely a very pleasing aesthetic. But the main draw for me is the platform combat mechanics. Progressing through the areas which look amazing, you'll have to take on various waves of bad guys using your varied weapons. The beauty of the combat is there's many different ways to tackle the different situations. Although the different weapons each have different strengths and weaknesses like range, damage, ammo amount and area of effect, the game never feels like any particular area is only made for one weapon type. Like here in this cave, I've spotted a large group of bad guys so I've chosen to use a crowd control weapon called a groovy bomb. This stops the enemies from attacking and forces them to dance. Then I throw in a protoclast which is an orb which emits a wide area of damaging pulse from it to dot the mobs. I finish the job off with the standard blaster gun and a Mr. Zircon which is a little helper robot which fires weak shots at the enemies. However, instead of all this I could have just fired off a few rounds of my peacemaker. This is a missile launcher which does a shit load of damage but only has 12 missiles before you need to find more ammo for it. Or what I could have done is just throwing a groovy bomb backed up a little bit then just throwing a few grenades into the group. Or I could have even thrown in a protoclast, then switched to the Rhino Railgun while jumping in and out of cover. The point I'm desperately trying to make here is that the weapon set covers so many different possibilities. How you use them is more down to how you want to play the game. You can just go in all guns blazing, or you could do some cover base shooting, you could try some tactical takedowns, or even stealth kill from a distance. Hell, you could even mix up those styles while doing a fight. Although I'd say that the brilliant combat mechanics are what creates the most fun and enjoyable sections of this game. Just like your mum, there's still a lot more on offer. For a start, each one of Ratchet's weapons can be upgraded. Not only do they level up more and more as you use them, but by using the gems that you find hidden around the levels, you can further modify each weapon to have far greater firepower, larger area of effect and greater clip sizes. Now, this might sound about as original as a crap YouTube intro. Yo, what's up? It's your boy K Silent. It's your boy, Young Metronome. This is your boy, Eat That Pussy 445. Ha <laughs> ha. Hey, it's your boy, uh, Skinny Penis. But what if I told you that this game also had. The best part about all this is that these features are quite spread out through the game and unlike your mum, they're not getting used every two and a half minutes. They don't interfere with the platforming and combat, they are just sprinkled a little bit here and a little bit there. You just saw a little clip there of the rail grinding. Grinding is only possible once you find the grind boots gadget and this is just one of a handful of useful gadgets that you'll find in the game. Some of these are the magna boots which allow you to walk on special magnetic pathways. A jetpack which allows you to fly on levels which contain jetpack fuel and the trespasser which allows you to open doors of areas that are locked off once you solve a little quick puzzle. As you collect the various gadgets in the game you can return to most levels you've already beaten and access areas that were previously impossible to reach. Most of these other areas are optional and are really there for people who want to 100% the game by collecting all the hidden gold bolts dotted around the levels. But wait, there's more! It's not just Ratchet you get to play as, there's also a few levels where you get to control Clank instead, rather than the platforming gun combat that the Lombax levels entail. Clank's levels are more puzzle based, using the limited amount of gadget bots around, you can create bridges, bounce pads and power switches. I think there's only about three of these levels in the game, which is about the right amount. Any more than that, they'll probably start getting tiresome, and just limiting Clank to a few levels just makes it feel like a welcome temporary change to the pace of the Game. Normally, a game with this amount of different types of content would feel a bit schizophrenic and usually each section feels a bit weak when there's so much on offer, but Ratchet & Clank manages to blend everything together seamlessly to create an incredible experience. I'm really glad I went back and tried this game out because it turned into one of my favourite titles of the generation and now I cannot wait for the next game on the PlayStation 5. Alright, that's a lot, Abba.